because I refuse to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I, I never shut up about it. It must have been about 17, 16, 17. We nicked their guilt rings. Right, the bouncer's guilt rings. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day. Welcome to Raw the Fight Within podcast with me, Coogan Cassius. This week I'm absolutely ecstatic to have Prince Patel on Raw. How are you, first of all? Am I going to call you Prince all the way through this? Uh, call me what you want to call me. It's an absolute honour to be on your podcast or for Raw. Thank you for having me. Okay. Is this how you're going to do the whole thing? Yeah, that's good. Um, Obviously, we've done quite a few interviews over the past seven, eight years. Mm. Most of them talked about on the the scene of boxing forums, etc., etc. But trying to make this a little bit differently. How this goes, I don't know. So we'll we'll see how it goes. Okay. Okay. Very easy. Very easy. This first one for you. What was your first ever memories of boxing? Ever. Uh, first memories of boxing was probably the 2004 Olympics with Amir Khan. If you're talking since then. No, I'm talking about your first ever memories of boxing. Yeah, probably seen Amir Khan in the 2004 Olympics. Did you have an interest for boxing before that? Uh, no, I was a wrestling fan. Wrestling fan, loved wrestling. Uh, wanted it to be about 6'5. Didn't happen. But yeah, I preferred wrestling, I kind of still do, but yeah. That's interesting. First yeah. of all, within two minutes, I learned something I didn't know about you. Yeah. So what was it? Was it specifically Amir Khan or was it? No, no, it was, um, I watched the Olympics when it happened because they was making a bit of a fuss about it. Well, it was on TV, watched it. And then I started watching other fighters and just, yeah, thought I could do this. Like most people wanted to play football, but if you're not the best in your class, you're not going to be the best in your year. If you're not the best in your school, you're not going to be the best in your borough. It's going to be very difficult. So I just thought boxing something where you can do it yourself. And if you're good, you'll make it. You'll find a way. Do you remember the first ever fight you went to? Watch. Uh, first ever was when I first had my first amateur fight, yeah. So the first ever fight you went Watch to was, was my was first yourself. amateur. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So would you pinpoint Amir Khan as... The boxer that got you into boxing, mm. or not necessarily? Who got you into it? Just more like, I just liked what I saw, like the boxing in general, like not necessarily just Amir Khan, but the other people that was in the Olympics that, that time. And yeah, I just took, a, took an interest into it and thought this is something I can do and be really good at it. Who do you pin as your kind of inspiration in boxing? Inspiration. I'd say myself. And I knew reason, you no, but the sense. reason why I would say that is because. It's, 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 it's bigger than just, oh yeah, like this guy won world titles, blah, blah, blah. It's like, for me, I believe I'm carrying the weight of 1.5 billion people. So I have to keep myself motivated to try and become the first Indian world champion so I can inspire other Indians, brothers and sisters out there. Because I believe we've got really great genetics and I believe that we can, we can dominate boxing. Actually, that, that answer, the way you answered it, you know, I knew you was going to say it, but obviously the context behind it, I kind of mm. see, actually, it's not a given that you have to name a boxer as a, a cliche mm. inspiration, which a lot of people do, there's nothing wrong with that, but mm. you inspire yourself. Yeah, obviously the, 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 there are other boxers out there that I do look up to and I would love to be like, like Floyd Mayweather. Um, I liked Nassim Hamed a lot. I would, I would like him to have continued for longer, but I would say my favourite, if you, if you say that, would be Floyd. Yeah. Do you ever think about, if you hadn't got into boxing, where you'd been now? Probably a model, movie star, jacked, girthy, extra girthy, yeah. Is that the answer? What do you think Probably. you'd be doing as a professional? Movie star, probably, isn't it? This look belongs in front of a camera. Okay. I ain't got a face for radio like certain fighters out there. I've got the face for the 
For the TV. Yeah. Do you think you'd be an actor? Possibly. Yeah, possibly. Would there have been a, a substitute if that didn't work out? Not a clue, man. Not a clue. Because you've obviously spent quite a long proportion of your yeah, life. Third of, uh, two thirds of my life have been spent boxing. And I'm just spending it all trying to make the goal happen. Do you think you could have been in any kind of other... You sound a bit negative right now. It's like you're going to say to me, like, maybe you should quit the boxing and go do this instead. That's, like, not, that's not what that was about. That mm. question's about if you wasn't in... If I wasn't a boxer. If you wasn't in the, the industry of boxing. No, I genuinely believe I could have been like a movie star or something like that. Yeah. Just yesterday I had a, a video call with Tyson Fury and his friends and they were saying that I looked like a Ken doll and that I should have been a Calvin Klein model. So obviously, if Big Tyson's saying that, it's got to be some elements of truth because he never lies, does he? That's what he said to you, yeah? That's literally word for word what they said, yeah. Okay. A Ken doll, yeah? A Ken doll. I was thinking an Indian Ken doll, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, a Ken doll, okay. Um, do you remember the first ever altercation you ever got into? Away from the ring, nothing to do with boxing. Nothing to As do with boxing. As a child. Yeah, I was just, as I said, I was a big wrestling fan, so like, I would watch Stone Cold do something to someone in wrestling, or The Rock or something. I used to go to school and I used to try it on these people. I thought that was normal, but obviously I used to get in trouble, it wasn't normal, but yeah, like... Did you get into fights as a kid? As a kid, well, as a kid definitely, a lot, yeah. Not so much in high school, but in junior school and infant school, a lot, yeah. And where did that all stem from? I think, just watching wrestling and thinking it was like a normal thing just to randomly attack someone and yeah. <laughs> what, yeah but in what aspect of life would you think that that was a normal thing to do? I was like six, seven years old, Coogan. Like I didn't really know about life as Okay, such, I didn't like, know you got in that, that kind of yeah. young age. Infant school, junior schools, yeah. And then into your teens, were you one of Teens, no, not really. When you deal with a few people in the school, like, p people don't really want to know and... I'm not saying I was like a, like a main person in school, I was an in-betweener in school. Uh, but yeah, just n not, not too many scraps in school. What do you mean in-betweener? It's like, you watch the show in-betweeners, yes. right? Oh, in reference to that, yeah. Yeah, I was basically one of them guys, yeah. Which one was you, though? I let the, I let the people at home think. <laughs> um, no, because... Some people, obviously, as you being a professional boxer, um, yeah. I didn't know whether it was something that was kind of, you had to put up with more so, getting into fights. No, I did get people trying to test me and stuff. But um, usually when people try to test me and, and they get really close to me, they um, understand that there would be an extreme danger. Um, so every time that's happened, they've been dealt with okay. accordingly. Okay. You're talking about when you was growing up, yeah? Yeah, yeah. In the purity of unarmed combat, of course. Obviously. Yeah. Do you remember a time in your life where you felt you were fighting a losing battle? Yeah, that's... that's every day. <laughs> every day, yeah. You feel like you're fighting a losing battle now? Uh, I believe, and I think everyone watching at home believes, I should be signed. I should be signed to a TV network whether they think I can fight or not is irrelevant because my record speaks for itself. Uh, national titles as an amateur, Box for England as an amateur, countless titles as a pro, numerous world rate rankings, uh, clearly marketable, clearly marketable. The only active Indian fighter who's proud to wave the Indian flag in the UK, only Indian fighter in the world, ratings worldwide. Massive market, I should be signed. I deserve to be signed. It's criminal that I'm not signed. So that is your... And, and the fact that when you look at my whole record and you think to yourself, this is a man who was on a small promotion, done an interview with yourself, managed to get himself on a TV network, didn't actually have a fight on TV, he was just doing four rounders once a year, eventually got his contract back because, let's face it, one fight a year isn't good enough. As soon as I'd done things on my own, it took me eight months to get world rated. 
After eight months, I was number 11 with the WBO. Whether you think I can fight or not is irrelevant. The, the proof's there. Um, think about that, though, when you think about it. I spent two years, basically, on the shelf, and then within eight months, while I took steed my career my own way, I was number eight, I was number 11 in the world. After eight months. I don't know how many Olympians who go pro and all that. I effectively look at it like as soon as I've done my own thing, it was like a debut again. And it took me eight months to get into the world ratings. That's the level I'm at. But it's you to get to the next level, because it's good being in the world ratings, but to then get to the top level of being a world champion, you need promoters behind you. You can't, it's not physically feasible to get world title fights on your own. That makes sense. It makes perfect sense. So that is what you would refer to as you fighting a losing battle. Hundred percent. It's ongoing. Yeah, ongoing, ongoing, ongoing. And uh, what keeps me going is the fuel of becoming the first ever Indian world champion. Because when it's all said and done, when you look back in the chronicles, you look back in the history books, you'll see this beautiful angelic face next to the first Indian world champion. What are the everyday battles for you away from boxing? No, but I think boxing stemmed all my everyday battles. Any mental health problems that I may or may not have has stemmed through boxing, stemmed through doing stuff and like not getting the, 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 the credit you deserve. The fact that no promoters reach out to me, I believe is criminal, it's wrong. I tick every box to get to be signed. Especially when you look at some of the the dead weight that most of these promoters have, I believe I tick every box. Might not be a heavyweight, but I still can generate more buzz than some of the heavyweights out there that are signed so what and you, getting promoted. What are you putting this down to? I don't know, I just feel like it's overlooked, really. Shouldn't be overlooked because the viewing figures speak for itself, the comments on the video speak for itself. Maybe you, maybe you've got something to play with this. You might have told them don't work with him. Is that what you really you think? You don't want to see like an Indian male make it. Is that what you really think? It could be, you know, obviously, like we're both South Asian, you're Sri Lankan, I'm Indian. Maybe, maybe you don't want to see an Indian make it. So you think I've been telling people? It, no. Someone has so, definitely been telling someone something. Well, it sounds like you're not taking responsibility for your own actions. I believe my actions speak volumes. How many boxers, if they was given the shaft, put on a shelf, would do what I have done and still persistently do what I'm doing. So what is it then? There must be something about you that, whether it's the gyms you've changed all the way through your boxing career, the fact that you're not signed, there's got to be something there, isn't there, without pinning it on or blaming someone else. Am I wrong in saying that or not? Strong possibility there, but you know what it is, Coogan? It's like, you may not know about this, but like a lot of good looking guys, yeah, when they speak to women, um, and they fornicate with these women and uh, they don't call this the woman back after, they then spread rumours about that guy saying he might not be good in the bedroom, he may, he may not have the, the girthy, lengthy tools, etc. I believe certain people in boxing who have worked with me before may have put some negative energy around me to certain people. So when they ask, oh, what's Prince like? They'll give some negative responses towards me. Okay. That's what I believe it is. I kind of got your analogy there. Yeah. Um, do you know that for a fact? It's all speculation. It's all speculation. Just like I'm speculating that I should be signed. Just like you're sitting there thinking you should be signed. Let's, let's be real, Coogan. If you was a promoter, would I be on your roster? Well, I'm going to answer this two ways. I do. I want the truthful way. That's what I want. I'm going to answer it two ways. So... In reference to what you just said there, part of me thinks, yeah, do you know what? You actually do tick boxes, correct. But also part of me thinks that to manage you or to promote you could end up being a fucking nightmare, mama language. So, mm, do I want that headache? That's, if I was a promoter and you want me to be really honest, that's what I would say. Do I want this headache? So wouldn't you sit down with the fighter, have a meeting with him, discuss stuff, and see if it's worth doing it. Always worth a conversation. Where are the conversations? I'm not even getting a text back. 
And guys that look like this always get texts back. I'll tell you a funny story. Me and my friend Marcus Williams, yeah, six foot six, um, dark skinned guy. You met him before, you done an interview with him, you didn't put it out unfortunately. But Marcus and me rolled up to Eddie Hearn's office in Brentwood and uh, we was threatened with police action if we didn't leave. He was not heard. He was told to leave. Why was you told to leave? They just said this isn't how we sign people and... Uh, what was the objective of you going there? What did you hope that would happen? I come with a massive portfolio and um, it was slightly embarrassing. Yeah, it was an embarrassing moment. Okay. Did you actually see Eddie Hearn? No, he actually wasn't in the office that day. He was, I think he had something to do with Devin Haney. But then funny enough, actually, we went to a Devin Haney public workout that was in a gym in London. And uh, Eddie said he would speak to me. And then towards the end, he saw me coming towards him and he, he ran. He ran. Like usually, people don't run from me. But Eddie actually ran. Now, I don't know if he was intimidated because of the length and girth, but maybe, like, I don't know, like, he just obviously didn't want to sign me. <laughs> it's around <laughs> here. I think, especially in your weight category, I'm not actually sure what specific weight category you are in currently. Where the money's at. Where the money's at, okay. But yeah, I do, I do think that it's, you'd be worth a punt. But you've been in this game a, a while now. You're not yeah. new to this. I know, and I'm thinking, <laughs> why am I still in the game the thing is, I've got to be realistic within myself, like, I'm not stupid, I can go abroad, I can get wins, I can, I can beat people. There's only certain level of fighters, realistically, for titles that I can afford to fight, that makes sense in fighting, where I don't just end up spending ridiculous amounts of money which I could just put into a house or whatever. Um, I have to be realistic, and it's difficult to, it's like even this fight that I'm having, I'm not going to name any opponents that I'm fighting because I'm, the whole idea of it is to show that I can sell tickets without even having to mention a name. But like, some of the guys we're reaching out to in the world ratings are asking for ridiculous amounts of money that I wouldn't even expect if I'm having a big fight against someone. And it's like, I don't know, like either people price themselves out or it's just difficult. It's difficult. And the only way you can do these big fights is if you have promotional backing. If you have a promoter who thinks, you know what, it's worthy of having this guy on their show because he will get views. He will bring a large amount of female audience to the, to the thing. And I'm all for, for women boxing. I said this before, but I'm helping women boxing. Imagine the amount of women, especially Indian women, that are going to watch me fight, pick up championship gold, waving the flag and think, not only do I want to be with that guy, but I want to be like that guy. Yeah. Imagine. You're pitching it. Yeah. You seem a little excited there, Coogan. Uh, would you call yourself an emotional person? Uh, when was the last time you cried? Or held back tears? Fought them tears back? We all men, but I'm joking. Um, uh, nah, it's funny, it's like, you don't strike me as very emotional. Look, it's boxing that gets me emotional because I believe I should be somewhere that I'm not right now. I believe I should be, I shouldn't have to be fighting on Dean White's show in Tolworth. I believe I'm bigger than that. And the ticket sales show that I'm bigger than that. But it's just getting signed. Getting signed. Okay. You completely deflected away from my question. I didn't ask you about- I know, I know what you're I'm saying. I'm asking you a question. Am I an emotional man? Are you an emotional man? Boxing has made me an emotional forget man. Forget boxing. It's, that's what's made Just me emotional. Just forget boxing for a minute, because I know regardless of you being in the gym every day, etc., mm. and doing what you do, I do mm. know that there is another side to your life. Are you an emotional person? 50-50. What causes emotion for you away from boxing? My mum, maybe? Yeah, something. Probably just that, really. Yeah. So that, your mother in terms of what could cause just emotion? The, like, if I see she's not looking happy, it can make me quite sad, you know? Because obviously in the Chronicles, once I become world champion, Queen Patel will be the person who gave birth to the first and only Indian world champion. So I'm doing it all for my mum. 
doing it all for my own single parent, brought me up to the fine specimen of a man that I am now and, you know, everything I do, I do it for her. What did your mum think about you even being a professional boxer? She said many times, now she, she's actually, uh, when I was younger, she didn't like obviously watching me fight and all that. Still don't like watching me fight. Uh, she doesn't even like me hurting anyone as well. So it's like, uh, you can't win. Like if you're winning, she's not happy. If you're losing, she's not happy. It's just a good relationship. I've got a good relationship with my mom. Probably the only person that believes in me. Yeah. What, well, everyone you know? To a certain degree? To a certain degree, I would say, yeah, my mum's full on... Now, there are people who do believe in me and have backed me, but I would say my mum... It's like unconditional, isn't it? It's unconditional. Usually supposed to be unconditional, but obviously, I don't know who my dad is. He obviously doesn't care about me, but um, my mum fully, yeah, cares about me fully. She's done a good job. People at home thinking, I've done a really bad job, but no. Nah, he's done a great job, yeah. Well, you're the only one who's qualified to answer that question, to be honest, so... Yeah. I really believe I'm a very educated man who's uh, aspiring to become a world champion. I think that's a, it's a great subject of a uh, child, yeah. My mum wanted to become a lawyer. Does that surprise you? No. It sorry. really doesn't. What, what would your mum have preferred you to Honestly, what my mum tells me now, yeah. uh, all my other siblings got degrees, uh, working very good paid jobs. Me, on the other hand, obviously not getting paid as much in the boxing as they're getting paid in their jobs, but like, she always just tells me as well, like, you, you should be a model or a movie star as well, something like that. Once I become a world champion, there will be a movie called One in a Billion. There will be a book called One in a Billion. It's inevitable. Do you manifest all this? 100%, every day. Every day, the thing is like, I, I do sometimes think to myself, look, how, you might be deluded. Like, you're, you're in this game for like eight years now, being pro for eight years. When do you have those thoughts of delusion? Daily, daily, like, I question myself. But then I think to myself, the viewing figures don't lie. The numbers don't lie. They look at the comments. 90% are positive. Give this guy a chance, he deserves it. How many boxers do you know would have done what I've done? How many boxers have you seen, oh, I'm not getting any fights, I'll just retire, I'll quit? Because they don't want it that badly. That's quitting them. How bad do they want it? People talk about they're willing to die and all this stuff for the sport. I'm willing to die to become a world champion, Coogan. I'm willing to die for it. Strong. Sacrificial lamb, I'm willing to do it. For the greater good of making 1.5 billion Indians rise up and take up the sport of boxing to make more of us become world champions. I'm willing to do it. Who, you gone? No, go on, carry on what you say. I might end up being a 70 year old man still fighting all around the world. Just chasing that goal of becoming a world champion. So is that a way of saying there's no quitting you? Nah, realistically talking, if nothing pops soon, I'm, I'm gone. <laughs> I'm gone. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> I have to be realistic, I ain't gonna keep like funding too much money into this. What will you do then? Hopefully it does, and I mean that. Hopefully it does. I don't does. know, like probably. If it doesn't work just, out, what, what are you gonna do? I'll be too resentful, man. I might end up just doing like a massive massacre of boxing and just genocide, take out everyone with me. Like, it's a strong putting out joke, and I wouldn't do that. Um, what I would do probably is. Speak to someone like Dr. Uz, get some pharmaceuticals, become very girthy. Probably try and just move on from there. Do, do you think that you would, if it doesn't work out how you want it to work out, do you think that you end up leaving the sport resenting the sport? I'm very resentful to the sport already. <laughs> Look, because Coogan, you have to under, people at home have to understand. In the amateurs, I was told win national titles. That's what you're supposed to do. I'd done that. They said, box for England. I'd done that. They, they, well, they also did say win a senior title. I got to the finals in that. Um, as a pro, they say, just, just keep winning. You'll get, you'll get picked up, you'll get signed, something like that. I have been. And not only am I winning, but I'm winning in style. I'm knocking people out. 
People ain't interested in these 12 round snore fests. These AJ against Franklin snore fests. What they're interested in is fist hits face or body, body decapitated. That's what they care about. And 24 KOs and 29 wins, it kind of speaks for itself, Kuvin. And you can't, and before people want to say he fought nobodies, he fought this, I'm fighting guys that the WBO, the IBF, the WBA, the Commonwealth have all approved. So when you want to break it down and you've seen these same belts on a matchroom show, on a boxer show, on a BT show, and, and you're saying these guys are winning these belts, maybe they're fighting bums too. Because if I'm fighting bums, what are they fighting to get the belts as well? If they're being approved by these organisations. You see, all they're thinking, okay. But then also what you do see, some fighters, like the other couple months ago, I saw a guy with four wins and 28 losses fighting for a Commonwealth title. The, since I vacated, obviously the, the, the belt's gone completely downhill. Completely downhill. Have you ever had to fight demons in your life, Prince? Dean White? Demons. Oh, demons. Not Dean White, no. Nah, uh, Have you got demons now? Are yeah. you fighting demons now? Yeah, I'm very resentful to boxing. I feel I've been wrongly done by you've whatever made a system. Prince, you've made a point of this and I get it. That's the only demon I got and that's the only thing. I don't believe that. If I ever yeah. get sad, it's due to boxing because I know, but I'll put it this way. I believe I should be someone, I'm not saying, I, I don't really care about becoming famous, all that sort of stuff, I just care about becoming a world champion. I obviously, in the process with a personality like mine, I know fame will come with it. It's common sense, you stick me on TV, you're exciting half the nation anyway, yeah? Um, I just believe my whole life should be different right now. I shouldn't be in a changing room with Coogan, Ram and Nathan. My life should be different. Really? Yeah. Okay. Well, sorry. It should be different. Should it be different? It definitely should be. I should be the first Indian world champion by now. So if you was the first Indian world champion, you wouldn't be in this dressing room with someone as lowly now, as what, me. Now, what we'd do probably is I would invite you to one of my houses. Oh, right. You okay, could, you're turning it we could have some around. comfort. You could try out some real, authentic... Indian food, and uh, yeah. But here we are in a gym in London. In a cold gym in London. In a cold gym in London. <laughs> yeah. So, your demons unrelated to boxing. You don't have any. I'd like to be like six foot five or something, but it never happened. Other than that, nothing else, man. Everything that's made me sad is boxing related. So if I ever end up writing a note, it will all be stemmed around boxing. Well, I can clearly see. But I do believe that there's other layers to you here. Because I, I actually hate the sport as well. I hate it. Like, only thing I love about it is potentially being the, well, the first Indian world champion. That's the only thing that's motivating me to stay. If I wasn't Indian, I wouldn't be in boxing right now. <laughs> it's the truth. If I wasn't Indian, I wouldn't be boxing right now. Because then it's not as big being a world champion, is it? It's like, there are certain world champions out here. They've starred in certain films like Lord of the Rings. Yeah, no one cares about that. No one cares about them. No, that's not going to inspire anyone. They ain't got the sort of face where they can go to schools and try and inspire kids. That's more scaring kids. It's more scaring kids. So, okay. I get your point. I've got your point from minute one about your yeah. resentment. And There's a lot of resentment to boxing, Kugan, man. Know. It's all, and you know what it is, the worst thing, I went on, I'll be... No, it's on, we're oh, on. Shit. yeah, yeah, okay. Do you want me to start that bit again? Well, I can, do you know what it is? If I speak to psychiatrists, I can't mention the real reason why I'm down. Because it's embarrassing. <laughs> why? Because it's, it's all stems from boxing, man. It's self-inflicted bullshit. Yeah. So there's nothing in your life, yeah, that you would class as a battle, fighting demons, whatever it is. There's nothing it's in your life everything that, that, that stems stemmed from boxing. There's nothing that is everything unrelated is, to, to boxing. No, everything that stems from so boxing. Your life, apart from boxing, I'm is, very regimental. 
Yeah, I go to the gym, I train. I go to the gym, I train. I, uh, I, in between training and stuff, yeah, I do fornicate with women. I do get up to all sorts of den of entities, but it all stems around boxing. Everything has to be training first, and I might squeeze someone in, but it's all training first. And not only is it training first, it's mapping out what I should do next. And it's always having to hope someone replies back to an email, hope someone actually interested. Because a lot of them waste your time as well, they make out they're interested, and you're sitting down on the shelf for another five months and you realise you're just getting older. You're not, you're now you're inactive on BoxRec. Now you have to go abroad and quickly get a match so you can now have a match in the UK because the board don't let you fight in the UK if you're inactive. If you've got a foreign license, that is. Yeah. I didn't, want, I didn't want to have to fly out two weeks before battle to have another battle. I didn't want to do that. But I had to do that. So what are you going to do about it? Well, I've shifted girthy numbers of tickets for this fight. Aside from that? Well, what can I do? I can't take any of these promoters hostage and start making them sign me, can I, Coogan? Like, well, you nearly did, I think, by the sounds of it. Turning up no, I just turned office. up as a professional, knocked on the door while we're on the bus. With your portfolio? A girthy portfolio. Okay. And, yeah, it just wasn't really... Well, he wasn't there for a start, so... Yeah, but he did, a week later, run away from me. So, you fight mm. for your community, your family, India. Yep. Who fights for you? Who's got your back? Unfortunately, at the moment, it's only Dean White, you know. It's only Dean White. Like, he's been speaking to a few people about it. We're trying to get something going. I meant in life, as opposed to who's backing you in. But that is life. Boxing, this is what I'm saying, Coogan. Boxing is life for... I could lie right now and say no, that boxing's a hobby to me. Like it's it's just like I'm just doing it for the just past the time and that. Boxing is life. Boxing is life. I have other business avenues that I do, but I can't fully commit to these business avenues because to focus on the boxing. You don't understand, Coogan. It's bigger than just a camera in someone's face. It's bigger than I get someone that. being a chat. It's Doing it for the whole community, Coogan. There's never been someone like me, and I emphasise like me, holding a world championship belt. Never. So imagine me when I was like seven years old watching TV and I got to saw someone like me holding a world title belt. Be very motivating. Very touching as well. Where does your fight spirit come from? Where does that stem from? Well, everyone knows it. Indian men are proper fighting men, you know? Obviously, a lot of people like to throw that around, saying that they're fighting men. I believe Indians are fighting men. Look at the wars the country's had, look at the battles that we've won. I just believe a lot of them, they're very smart, and they just think with boxing, it's a stupid thing to get into. Um, whereas me, I was just probably just too... Looking for the right word for, to say, but like, because I am, I am a very smart person, but it's just, I feel stupid actually doing boxing. I feel stupid putting all my energy into it. Yeah. Can you expand on that a little bit? Like, most Indians won't box because... You think you're too intelligent to be doing boxing, is that what you're No, I'm not saying I'm too intelligent to do boxing. I'm saying most Indians are very intelligent people. I'm not saying that boxers ain't intelligent. I'm just saying that most Indians will think to themselves, what's the chances of us making it? What's the chances of us doing this? Whereas with me, I have belief in myself. And that belief is probably the only thing that's forcing me to continue. I could easily go get an, another job. What, yeah. what would that be? I'm not going to say what that would be. What? Because I don't know what that would okay. be. <laughs> what would you like it to be, apart from a movie star? And Hollywood, Bollywood. I don't know, Coogan, man. I don't know. I've thought about this. Because I've... your life has been centred around what you've been I talking know, about but... for the last half an hour. Didn't realise that you were that fixated on... I want to be the first Indian world champion. I believe 
if you look at the other Indians in the UK that are boxing, most of them have a handful of fights. Some of them have got losses already at the early stage. I would like them to do well. But I'm going to be honest with you, I, I want myself to be the first Indian world champion. I don't want you guys to. I want myself to do it. I want to be in the Chronicles where everyone talks about. I want my picture to be around India. The statue? I personally do believe they would do that. If I was on TV getting the platform I deserve and I win a world title, there will be a statue of me in India, 100%. Where in India? Probably Mumbai, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Has boxing caused any phases of depression in your life? I've been through this. Of course it has. We haven't been through it at all. Of course, any time I feel sad is due to boxing. But being sad and being depressed is yeah, but like, it's kind of so you. I have yourself. Been, are you? I do. Like, I'll be honest with you. I do get depressed around boxing. 100%. Especially when I'm watching TV and I'm seeing guys... I don't watch the boxing on the actual channels anymore. I just watch it on Twitter. And I'm seeing guys who I believe are not as marketable as me, not as good looking as me, not as good as me, and they're getting pushed. Of course, it fucking makes me sad, man. It's going to make anyone sad. It's a very... Sorry for saying the F word there, but it does. It makes me oh, sad, yeah. It makes you sad, but does it make... It, it's not it the makes same me... F- it, as... Saying that you're depressed though. I would say, yeah, it has made me depressed in the past. Right now, I'm fit, healthy, ready to go and win this weekend. You're fighting again this week? Yeah, on Dean White Show. Okay. This is what I mean. If it was on a TV platform, you would know about this. (laughs) Well, I think you should be grateful for Dean White putting you on the show. I think Dean White needs to be publicising it more. How did you not know? That was the reason why I fought... Two weeks ago, it was because I had to fight. Oh, April to 15th, be I did know this, and the post is all over your gym anyway. Yeah, how did you not know this? Oh, yeah, okay. You just forgot about it. I didn't forget about it. Or was you like just getting like visually distracted, thinking, oh, why can't I look like that? Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. Exactly what I was thinking. To be honest, um, by the time this goes out, you would have already had your fight. Like Let's hope I fucking win. <laughs> You're, I don't know, you're very difficult to read and work out, but I think that's what you you do accidentally on purpose. Okay. Is that a fair comment? I'd really? probably say so. thing is, I'm not going to sit in an interview and I'm not going to do one of them crocodile tears trying to cry. I've I'm, never expected you to do but it. But I'm just saying, I know a lot of people, they, they throw around the mental health stigma and they look for people to feel sorry for them and all that. Listen, this is all self-inflicted on myself. I, sh- I, I don't have to be a boxer. I don't have to try and be the first Indian world champion. If it makes me depressed, it's my own fault. I don't have to do it. But I'm choosing to do it. It's like a guy who, let's say, breaks his virginity for the first time. He gets a girl. He don't get, norm- he don't get girls normally. The girl's okay-ish looking. She's just mugging him off. And he's just running back. It's his own fault. I can't sympathise with him. That's basically me with boxing. I'm being mugged off. But I'm still running back. But only for so long, yeah? Definitely, yeah. I've got to be realistic with myself, man. I... Do you think you still be active in another three years? If I haven't been signed? Well, yeah, I'm assuming you wouldn't be if that was a three If I haven't been signed from... Now and three years. Look, if I've been, if I get signed by any this time next year, then let's let's make it easy. Have I been signed by a TV promoter? If you haven't been signed, okay. by a TV promoter by this time next year, nah, I've got to be realistic. I'm done. You're done. Done. There won't be. And before anyone wants to try and say the Prince Patel fight will always be there for me, no. Once I'm done with boxing, I'm probably going to end up being about ninety kilos bigger. Bed. Boxing's actually stopped me from becoming like the Adonis that I should be. Okay. It's true, true. It's stopped me from doing that. Because obviously you have to make weight and don't want to be too heavy, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Am I right in thinking that if if you're out of the sport, I don't think anyone will see you, will I? 
I don't think you're one of these people because you're not one of these people. No, kind of I'm, I'm not like Tony, socially active around I'm, the boxing scene. Exactly, soon. exactly. Right. I'm not like a Tony Bellew who goes, "Once I'm done with boxing, I'm going far away." Yet you see him all the time, like smooching in front of the camera, yeah, jumping into random made-up fights with Franklin's corner team and all of that, just trying to stay relevant. I'm not one of them fame whores like Tony the Bellend Bellew. I'm not a fame whore like the Bellend. I'm just someone who just wants to become a world champion. That's it. Apart from your want of yeah. being the first ever Indian world champion, yeah. apart from doing it for your mother, yeah. what else drives you? For the, for the community, man. I want there to be Indian kids who are watching sports and I don't want them to think, oh, I can't do this because when has there ever been someone like me doing this? I don't know if you ever watched the film Bend It Like Beckham. Yes. There was a point where um, the girl's dad said to her, none of our boys are in the league, in the leagues, which is, which is back then was true. It still kind of is true. There isn't many of us in, when I say us, I mean the Indian brotherhood and sisterhood in any of the leagues. So I'm trying to make it that they, they can be inspired. So that drives that fight with me. Of course you. it is. I've yeah. said that the whole interview. <laughs> the whole interview. Yeah, I'm just agreeing with what you said. Yeah. It's yeah. like, imagine if you was the first Sri Lankan world champion. The first Sri Lankan world champion. Imagine what that could do. Yeah. Imagine they might do, boxer. Yeah. They might do like a, a statue of you in Sri Lanka. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. Well, follow your dreams anyway. That's what I'm trying to tell everyone. Yeah, well, you've been telling everyone the same yeah. thing. I think, yeah. I think we get the point anyway. Mm. Okay. Well, listen, I appreciate you uh, coming on this podcast. And I appreciate you for having me, Mr. Ram and Nathan. I appreciate you for having me. Yeah. Okay. I'm a good person. I do the sirva. People saw me do the sirva in Africa. I don't have to do that. I don't have to do that. I've done that because of the goodness of my heart, you know? I'm not like one of them people who just make up stuff, make out that they're giving money to the charities, make out they're giving their money to the homeless when that's clearly a lie. I'm just out here with the goodness of my heart trying to help people. Not necessarily the Indian community as well. It's helping people in the deprived ends of East Africa. That's what I was doing, Mr. Ramanathan. It's good work. It's God's work. It's God's work. Yeah. It's God's work. Okay. Um, I'm going to just give you an opportunity to say anything else before we kind of close off. All right, any TV promoter, please sign me, man. <laughs> please sign me. <laughs> I feel like I'm a, a beggar right now, Coogan. I feel like a beggar. And someone that looks like me, someone that looks like a Disney prince, shouldn't have to be going cup in hand. Please, can I have some more? I shouldn't have to be doing that. I shouldn't have to be doing that, Coogan. Tick every box. All right, man, Nathan, what have you done? <laughs> I think it's fine. Okay. You said it cut It had, yeah, it's fine. We, so can pick it, we can pick it back up without you being weird. How do we know where it cut off at? Well, just keep talking and I'll find the point. How, how are we supposed to know? It could have cut off like half an hour ago. It hasn't cut off half an hour ago. This is all in, by the way. We're, we're actually all recording. In. Yeah, I'm recording. Um, so, have you got anything else you'd like to... Why would your camera stop recording mid-flow? That don't happen on certain on other outlets. Okay. It Pe just did. People are saying IFL have lost their touch. Are they? They are saying that. Oh, no, the figures out. have gone lower. The figures have gone lower. Have they? They have gone lower. We're doing all right. And that's you. why you're bringing me back on. Hmm. It's a shame like IFL understand it. The, I'm not going to name their names, but the other outlets understand it. Why can't the TV... Promoters understand. Baffles me, mate. Exactly! Honestly, it really baffles me <laughs> how someone wouldn't want to be in control of you promotionally or even from a manager or This is why the truth is finally coming out. Like, it just baffles me. Are you being... I'm, No, I'm looking at you now thinking to myself, oh my God. Why can't I look like oh that? Oh my God. Why can't I? No, I definitely don't want to look like you. Um, but yeah, I'm baffled why no one wants to involve themselves with you on that front. Ah, oh, so the truth come out in the end, yeah? It's not in the end, I'm just, I'm baffled, yeah. I can't see it. Why can't you do some of God's work when you're interviewing some of these promoters, just randomly slip my name in? 
Okay. Slip my name in. The, the, the IFL masses will be happy about that. The they viewers, be, yeah. they would be. They want to hear about Maybe me. Maybe if me and you had a normal kind of relationship, then... We do. Do we? I, do we? I'm not going to give it to you, Coogan, if that's what you're after. Give what to me? I'm just saying, just being normal, just... Oh, I see. Just, it, we've been, pr not pre, in the pre of this, 40 minutes, it was hard work. This has actually gone relatively well, to be fair, yeah. which you actually said it would do. Yeah. But yeah, beforehand was a little bit painful. Yeah. Yeah. Just a bit of banter, two friends. It's, 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 yeah. A little bit of banter, yeah. Two friends, yeah. I'm just... Can't you do some of God's work, do the silver, ask people like Edward Hearn, Benjamin Shalong, Frank Warrens. Ask these guys. Ask these guys why. Why are they promoting dead weight when they could promote the girth? Ask them this. Prince Patel, thank, thank you, you very much once again for appearing on Raw The Fight Within podcast. We will see you next Monday. Make sure you comment, like and subscribe. We're thank out. You. Peace. to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I never shot up at it. And it must have been about 17, 16, 17. We nicked their guilt wins. Right, the bouncer's guilt wins. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day.